Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Monday. It is March 14th. Steph is back. She was out for spring break last week, but you probably the highlight you would agree other than spending time with your daughter, quality of course, time. Of course, of course. <laughs> was seeing Coach Pop break the record on Friday night. Yeah, we were so excited and so happy to, you know, to, to witness that. We didn't know that would happen. We, you know, got the tickets a long time sure. ago, but it was super cool. Well, she had two chances, and they didn't yeah. do it versus Toronto, so they got it done yeah. in that surprise win. And you were worried about it, too, weren't you? I was. I felt like I was the only one, though, because, uh, well, they were, you know, down by 10 at the beginning of the four. Yeah. And we were, you know, everybody was cheering because they started catching up, but I was still like, you yeah. know, even though the Spurs were ahead for a little bit, I was still nervous and uh, well, but, but glad it turned out well for Coach Pop and the team. I, I think you'll agree. It was electric to watch it on TV. I can't even imagine what it was like oh, in person there at the AT&T Center. It was just roaring. Everybody, you know, super excited, super happy. Well, we're going to talk to David more about that coming mm -hmm. up a little bit later in the newscast, but let's switch gears. You're just now tuning in. A lot of you just now kind of waking up. Maybe it's your spring break, wondering what the weather was going to be like this week here is Sarah Spivey. Thanks Mark. It is going to be spring like this week for all of the spring breakers out there. Highs in the 70s and 80s. A bit different from last week when we were seesawing back and forth between cold and warm weather. Take a look at the pollen count today. Looks pretty good. Bolds, ash and oak are present, but they are low outside right now. A mix of sun and clouds. Half of the county is under cloud cover. The other half seeing sunshine. It's 54 degrees outside right now. Winds are from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. Today, we're going to be seeing those clearing skies and in the afternoon, warm 80 degrees for the high, a bit breezy too. Winds from the south southwest gusting up to 25 miles per hour this afternoon. But tonight, mild. However, there will be a few storms east because of a cold front moving through late tonight. That cold front will actually bring windy conditions to the counties you see here in pink this afternoon. Red flag warning for Edwards, Valverde and Kenny County as we're expecting some high winds, low humidity. That's a risk for grass fires, so that's what a red flag warning means. What's up with the weather? What do you need to know? Near 80 and comfortable this afternoon, but those storms east tonight are possible. I'll be detailing that in the full forecast in just a bit. Great spring break weather otherwise this week. The one thing we're missing, healthy rain. The details in the forecast coming up. We look forward to it. Thank you, Sarah. And a quick look at the roads of Transky. Looks like uh, there might be a stalled vehicle there off of I-10. Uh, looking at I-35 O'Connor, things look to be pretty normal over there. We do have a few slowdowns here or there. We'll keep an eye on them for you, but overall things are green on the map. Hey, KSAC community partnering with the United Way of San Antonio and Bear County for the 8th Annual Shoebox Project. So it is an effort to provide shoeboxes filled with everyday toiletries to be distributed to nonprofit partners. Over 9,700 boxes have been requested to help those in need. Max Massey joined us live. So Max, what are they asking for to be put in these shoeboxes to be specific? All right, good morning, guys. Yes, you know, they're asking for toiletries and things that you and I might take for granted to help break this down more. Joined here with a Brandon from United Way. So, Brandon, how does this all work? Where do the toiletries go and how can people help? Yeah, thank you very much. So, simple project, right? We're asking the community to take a shoebox. We want you to decorate it and then fill it with everyday toiletry items. So, that toothbrush, toothpaste, lotion, deodorant, about 13 items that the United Way is requesting. Um, and then those items are going to go to about 50 agencies throughout the community. So, we're looking at schools within SIASD. We're looking at organizations that service our homeless population, mothers, and children. So, great project that goes a long way. Now, I really like that you brought up children and families because you know the last two years hasn't been easy for a lot of families in and around our area and you know you and i talked about using spring break as a way to come together as a family kind of make this a family project yeah absolutely so we have a lot of families organizations from girl scouts boy scouts that come together and make it a, a group project so families get together and literally have a shoebox party so they'll put together all their shoe boxes bring in the decorating items and then fill all those items and then take them either to the united way or the san antonio food bank so with it being spring break looking for things for your kids to do definitely have a ready and able to give back to our community and it's not just today this this event is going to be going on for a little bit right Correct. Yeah. So the project will go over the next two months. It ends the last Friday in April. We have about six volunteer projects taking place over that time frame. And again, we'll accept donations through the end of April as we'll begin to distribute all these boxes out to our community. 
Okay, this might seem a little bit confusing. So for any parents, any families watching, I know they're probably on spring break right now. Hopefully they're just waking up, 9 a.m. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> how can they go about it? What specifically, what are the specific items that you guys need the most? Yes, so we request about 13 items. We do our shoe boxes by gender. So they go out to male and female um, as well as children boxes. Uh, so toothpaste, lotion, deodorant, shampoo, conditioner, soap, feminine hygiene products, band-aids. Um, over the years, we see a high donation of toothpaste and uh, toothbrushes, but we really need those band-aids that we really need that shampoo, conditioner and those uh, feminine hygiene products. So get all your donations together. You can drop them off at the United Way downtown location over at the San Antonio Food Bank. And we're definitely making both donations. Make sure that the organizations know that you're dropping them off for the United Way Shoebox Project. All right, Brandon, thank you so much. Really thank appreciate you for having me. This morning. And guys, if you have any more questions, we're going to have so much more coming up on the news at noon and also ksat.com. Mark, Stephanie, back to you guys. We covered a lot of ground there. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Good to see you, buddy. All right, in morning headlines, the latest from the fighting in Ukraine and talks aimed at bringing relief for civilians. An, uh, and an update on COVID vaccines. And turning rivers green on purpose for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> David Sears is here to explain all that. We're familiar with that. Good morning. Not far away from St. Patrick's Day either. No, what? it's this week, Thursday. Mm -hmm. Thursday? Is yes, that sir. Gotta, gotta check wear, wear your green or else you know who's going to uh, be pinching you. <laughs> I guess I'll have to find a green tie or something. Yes, you, you do. Let's start with this today, though. The Russians keep getting more pressure on the capital city of Ukraine, Kiev. The city continue to be shelled by Russian troops. They mostly have been directed at suburbs, missile launches though, and bombings. However, there are more rounds of talks between the Russians and Ukrainians scheduled for today. Hopefully, they're gonna be bringing about a resolution that would allow civilians to escape the shelling and allow supplies like food and water and medicine to get those in need. Just yesterday, Russia hit a military base with an airstrike, that base 10 miles from the Polish border. U.S. troops were there just about a month or so ago training Ukrainian troops. The Americans were gone, but 35 Ukrainians were killed. The Russians have also attacked an aircraft factory, killing two more. The week is beginning with some big pandemic updates that could affect you and your family. Pfizer says you might need another booster shot. The company also saying its COVID-19 treatment could be available for most kids between before they head back to school this fall. And vaccinations for kids under five could be available in May. The global coronavirus pandemic now in its third year. Here we go. It's getting ready for St. Patrick's Day, dying the Chicago River Green. That doesn't look that good, but it will eventually when it all spreads out and, you know, they can start celebrating. The event was canceled back in 2020 during the pandemic while the river was died in 2021. Attendance of course, was a little limited, but this year, oh, you can expect the banks of the river and the river to be packed as they celebrate St. Patrick's Day in Chicago. What about here in San Antonio? Turning our own river green in honor of St. Patrick's Day. The San Antonio River has actually been dyed green every year for this occasion since 1968. This year, the dyeing will take place from 1 to 3 p.m. on March 17th and again on March 19th. So... The river will be celebrating as the rest of the folks who are enjoying St. Patrick's Day. We are ready. Yes, we yeah, are. We need, we need a good celebration downtown. We do. So the 17th, because it's actually St. Patrick's Day, and the 19th for the, the parade. 19th for the parade. We could call this a primer for Fiesta, right? I was going to say yeah. this to get it kind of warmed up for, yeah. for Fiesta, yep. which is just right around the corner. That's yeah. right. So. We are getting closer. All right. David, thank you. We'll talk Spurs and Pop coming up. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Rising gas prices still making headlines. National average is $4.33. That's according to AAA. That's average in Texas is about $4. And in San Antonio, the average is about $3.98 almost 50 cents more than it was a week ago. Well, police departments around the country are now warning drivers to be on the lookout for gas thieves. ABC's Gio Benitez has a story. This morning, as the cost of gas spikes across the nation, there's no way that all these people are affording this. A new warning about thieves at the pump. Take a look at this video. While it may look like nothing is happening here, the manager at a gas station in Houston says thieves are taking thousands of dollars worth of gas, 360 gallons per day for three days from the underground tank. The van drives on top of the fuel tank, and then um, that's all you see. No one comes out, so they have a trap door inside their vehicle, which is crazy.
In fact, he says, they tried to come back for a fourth day, but the manager chased them away. Cases of gas theft are popping up all over the country, from California to Virginia. In Washington state, the Everett Police Department is issuing a new warning about people siphoning gas, writing on Facebook, while some thieves use rubber hoses to siphon fuel out, we are seeing modern day thieves use power tools to drill a hole in the gas tank and steal fuel. Victims are often left with huge bills. I think the frequency of, of people drilling in gas tanks has increased. Part of it has to do with the increase of, uh, of gasoline uh, here in the near term, but also over the past 12 months. And experts say if you can, park your car in your garage or perhaps even a well-lit area near your home. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, Uber says it's going to start charging a surcharge of up to 55 cents per trip. The company says all of that money will be going to the workers. Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. And right now on our website, we have a look at the cheapest places you can get gas in San Antonio. Just head to KSAT.com and look for the story. You can find it on the homepage. Right now, 908, about 54 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Just ahead, some students here in San Antonio are being shuttled to doctor's appointments. We're going to tell you how this program works next. Welcome back, 912. The pandemic has furthered health issues for families, both physically and mentally. Children need extra care, but many parents have used up their time off caring for kids or getting sick themselves. Courtney Friedman shows us how the Jubilee Academy's charter school system here in San Antonio is stepping in. Valerie Guzman has four kids at Jubilee Charter School in San Antonio, where she works as a health assistant. I've missed about, I want to say two weeks during the COVID period. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to miss. That's why she was thrilled to hear about Jubilee's new partnership with University Health Systems Teen Clinic at the Robert B. Green Center downtown, a public one-stop shop for ages 10 to 24. The kids who sign up for the program leave school together, hop on a bus, head to the clinic, and when they get back, they head straight back to class and are never counted absent. The appointments are on Mondays and Wednesdays and are for both physical and mental health. We identified the behavioral health needs were needed, so we hired a counselor to be able to refer to them. And because we saw a high rise, especially during uh, the COVID pandemic with anxiety and depression. Diana Gonzalez is university's executive director of women's health and says every child who goes to the teen clinic is assessed for mental health. We are specifically trained to be able to ask the appropriate questions uh, because they feel this is a trusted space. And the clinic providers don't just make mental health referrals. We have so many children with diabetes or more serious illnesses. They refer out to a clinic that is there at Robbie B. Green. Jubilee Student Services Director Diana Centeno says 30 students have already been signed up. That was Courtney Friedman reporting. There's also a pharmacy in the clinic. Prescriptions are filled and given to the chaperone. The chaperone then brings it to the campus, gives it to the health assistant or the nurse, and they will give it to the parent. Switching gears, Sarah Spivey joins us now once again. And Sarah, I'm fascinated by the first image in your show for a couple of different reasons there. Okay, what are a couple of the reasons? Well, one, I like when we can see imagery from orbit that yeah. shows night lights of yeah. larger metro areas or even some of the leftover fracking. Yeah. And then I also love when we see the changeover from night to day or day to night. Yeah. We're going to be looking at that satellite here. I, I find it fascinating too. Mm -hmm. And it's showing something really interesting this morning. Let's take a look at that satellite. This is the GO satellite, a geostationary satellite. So basically it spins at the exact same speed of the Earth so that it can stay in one place and see one thing over uh, a, an extended period of time. And right now we're looking at cloud cover. There's the night lights that Mark was talking about there showing the metro areas. I've labeled them. There's the clouds. It's really interesting because areas north of downtown San Antonio and west of downtown San Antonio are completely in cloud cover this morning. But throughout the day, we'll be seeing that sc those skies clear. But if you live south of downtown San Antonio, you're saying what clouds? It's totally 
sunny. And that's that's the interesting thing today. It's going to have an interesting impact on our temperatures outside right now. You can see some haze on the horizon from increasing humidity and those stratus clouds that are pretty much bisecting uh, the county Bear County itself. 54 degrees and mostly cloudy at the airport right now. Winds from the south southeast at about 10 miles per hour and temperatures are generally in the 50s. It's 56 in Kerrville, 58 in Comfort, 51 in New Braunfels, 50 down at Pleasanton and 53 in Divine, 54 in Del Rio, 60 in Victoria and 58 in LaGrange. So today those temperatures are much warmer this morning than they were yesterday morning. Yesterday morning we were in the 20s and 30s and today we're about uh, 20 to 30 degrees warmer than how we started off the day yesterday. So it is going to be a warm one for us. These clouds though are slowly going to dissipate. If you're not seeing clouds right now, you're going to be sunny all day long. But generally those who are seeing clouds, those will slowly start to dissipate, especially after lunch. And then the afternoon will be sunny and warm for all of us around the KSAT 12 viewing area around South Central Texas. It's going to be near 80 degrees in San Antonio. The further west you go, though, the hotter it will be toward Del Rio. Uh, the mid to upper 80s are a good bet and up in the hill country where it's fairly cloudy right now. That's where those clouds are going to erode slower. And so highs up there will be in the mid to upper 70s. There is also something to mention for our counties east of San Antonio. So Gonzalez and Lavaca, there is a small chance for storms tonight with the passage of a cold front. We'll talk about that in a bit. But for now, know that today if you are seeing clouds, you'll see clearing skies by noon and then in the afternoon it's going to be warm and sunny 80 degrees for the high. It's also going to be breezy too. winds from the south southwest gusting up to about 25 miles per hour. And then notice after 10 p.m. a weak cold front is going to move through bringing a few storms east of San Antonio. Here's where that system is right now moving across the panhandle that cold front a risk for severe weather tonight, especially for East Texas and Northeast Texas. We notice that San Antonio is not in a risk for severe weather, really even for storms, but there are going to be storms up near Dallas Fort Worth, East Texas, and we're going to be on the tail end of the system. So even as far south as Seguin, there could be a storm or two uh, in the late evening hours tonight, but that'll stay north and east of San Antonio and we'll just be left with breezy and dry conditions for the remainder of the week. So I kind of feel bad for those who celebrated spring break last week and had to deal with the ups and downs in temperatures. This week is going to be a much more spring like highs will be in the 70s and 80s. And if you do live east of San Antonio, Seguin, Gonzalez, Hallettsville, know that there is a chance for storms tonight and we'll continue to keep you updated, especially on our KSAT Weather Authority app where we send notifications right to your phone. Otherwise, dry in the week ahead. All right. Thank you, Sarah. We'll be watching. Now to celebrating the life of William Hurt, the Academy, Academy Award winning actor passed away at the age of 71. ABC's Amy Robach has more on his life and incredible career. What was the argument about? I told him he was wasting his life. Whether it was mourning his college friend in the big chill. So what do you think? If you'd been in touch with him, you could have saved his life? You have that kind of effect on the people in your life? Keep them all jolly, do you? Wise up, folks. We're all alone out there, and tomorrow we're going out there again. Or channeling intelligenic anchorman in broadcast news. What I don't know, I can learn. What I do know, nobody can teach. William Hurt became a leading man for the baby boomer generation. Arate, stop for that woman. Handsome and stoic on the outside, but inside, a world of complicated emotions. No. I'll buy that. No, I won't. How could I? Because I love you. Love has nothing to do with it? That's wonderful. Then what the hell have we been doing? 
William Hurt was born in Washington, D.C. and attended Juilliard. A few years after graduation, he became a household name in 1981 thanks to the film Body Heat. I need someone to take care of me, someone to rub my tired muscles, smooth out my sheets. Get married. I just need it for tonight. Mm. <laughs> Hurt was nominated for an Oscar in the Best Actor category three years in a row, but the big win came in 1985 for Kiss of the Spider Woman. What's wrong with being like a woman? Why do only women get to be sensitive? I'm very proud to be an actor. Thank you very much. In recent years, Hurt stepped into the Marvel Universe, playing Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. For the past four years, you've operated with unlimited power and no supervision. That's an arrangement the governments of the world can no longer tolerate. He continued to work on films like Black Widow, despite his prostate and bone cancer diagnosis in 2018. Natasha Romanoff is in violation of the Sokovia Accords. William Hurt was 71 years old and leaves behind four children. That was Amy Rohrbach reporting from ABC. I just watched him in broadcast news again a week or two ago. Yeah, that was uh, that's the one I remember. It's, it's a fun film. Yeah. 921, about 54 degrees. And after the break, trending now, we're going to tell you about some of the stories you can check out right now on KSET.com. Training now on KSAT.com, a new story from the San Antonio Business Journal. More than five years after the San Antonio City Council approved a mixed-use development plan, expected to funnel some $200 million in private investment into Hemisphere. Zachary Hospitality is moving closer to finalizing a new deal for the former World's Fair site downtown. Zachary had pursued a plan to include the development of a 200-room hotel and a 150,000-square-foot office tower in downtown San Antonio. We'll keep you posted. One San Antonio family's heartbreaking loss of their son led them on a journey to better the community in his memory. It's led to the development of a 42 acre park called Mitchell's Landing. Mitchell Chang was three years old when he drowned back in 2018. Now, after his death, his family decided to put their efforts into a free public playground that will also be inclusive for families who have children with disabilities. Now, the park will be located on Hardy Oak Parkway. It should be open at the end of 2022. You can read more about both of these stories on our website at KSAT.com. There is much more ahead on GMSA at 9. Ahead in our next half hour, the latest on the crisis in Ukraine. We're going to track the new development. And checking Transcad right now. See how the roads are looking out there. We had a few incidents earlier, but most of them were off to the side of the road. That one's what appeared to be a fender bender. They pulled into that parking lot at 35 at O'Connor. That's clear. Ten of days of all is looking fantastic at 926. We'll be back. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after an argument overnight. It happened around midnight on Fossil Banks. That's near 1604 in Shanefield on the city's far west side. Investigators tell us the victim was standing in the street when police say a man pulled up and started arguing. The man in the vehicle started shooting, hitting the victim. He died at the scene. Police have been questioning witnesses in the hopes of learning more about what happened. And right now, a man is recovering after he was hit by a vehicle late last night. So this is video from the scene just before 1030 on South New Braunfels and Denver Avenue on the east side. Police tell us a man stepped off the curb and into the street when he was hit. The driver stopped to help and he was rushed to the hospital. At last check, he was in critical condition. It was a very violent weekend around the San Antonio metro area with multiple deadly crashes and deadly shootings happening. Take a look at this map. You can see all the incidents marked here. Four of them took place on Saturday. The other two happened early Sunday morning. You can read more about all these incidents on our website. We'll continue to follow up on them throughout the day and bring you the latest on air and online. And if, if you haven't already, make sure you download the KSAT app and turn on notifications so you can get news alerts right to your device. And taking a look outside with live cam, looking nice and pretty out there at 55 degrees. Yeah, guys, and you know, we can't say this enough, but we need some rain. We just don't have a significant chance for rain, unfortunately, in the forecast for us. Although some areas east of San Antonio could see some storms tonight. Let's take a look at the aquifer to see how we've been doing. Well, it looks like we're actually going to be seeing the aquifer continue to go down a little bit. And in the pollen count today, there are three allergens out there. There's mold, 
oak and ash, but they're all low, so that's some good news. Okay, let's take a look at temperatures outside as long as as well as the satellite. We've got some clouds north of 410 uh, and in Bear County and up into the hill country. It's cloudy at Bernie Stage Airfield, cloudy in Kerrville, cloudy north of Hondo, but elsewhere we're seeing plenty of sunshine like at Stinson and south of Highway 90. Temperatures are in the 50s everywhere you look, 54 in Del Rio, 59 in Gonzales and 57 in Beeville. All right, today's forecast calls for a warm afternoon high temperature of 80 degrees south southwest at winds at 10 to 15 will gust up to 25 miles per hour this afternoon, so it will be breezy. And yes, there is a chance for a few storms east of San Antonio as a cold front sweeps through south central Texas tonight. But don't worry, it's a weak cold front. It won't bring back winter. Hey, I'll show you a more detailed look at that pollen count in the aquifer coming up in a bit. Transguide right now, fairly light traffic out there right now. I've seen some slowdowns on 410 near Houston Street and Rigsby. No known cause. I don't see any listed accidents. But uh, other than that, traffic is uh, moving great around town. There's 90 at Couples. And now to troubling signs that Russia is widening the war over the weekend, attacking a military training facility in western Ukraine near the border of Poland, a NATO ally. At least 35 people killed in the airstrikes. Meanwhile, high stakes diplomacy is getting underway in Rome. That's where National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan is meeting with his Chinese counterpart. ABC's Ian Pinnell has the story. This morning, the war in Ukraine spreading to the west of the country. Russian missiles striking a military base near the town of Yavoriv, around 10 miles from Poland, a U.S. NATO ally. The strike killing at least 35 and wounding over 100. The U.S. saying it's clear Russia is now broadening its attacks. Now, a senior U.S. official telling ABC News that Russia has asked China for military support, something it says it's keeping a close eye on. This morning, Chinese officials dismissing the claim. On the ground, although Putin's army has made no significant progress on the battlefield, it has been shelling towns and villages around the capital, Kyiv, and this morning, even hitting an apartment block in a northern suburb of the city. A Ukrainian lawmaker at the scene sending us this video. I'm staying in Kiev near a big residential building which was hit this morning, just three hours ago, by direct uh, heavy artillery shell. Another area that's been repeatedly hit is Irpin, just outside Kyiv, where thousands of civilians have fled from. But still, innocent people are caught in the crossfire. Among them was an American journalist, Brent Renault, killed by Russian forces while on assignment for Time Studios. He and fellow American journalist Juan Arredondo were riding in a car when it came under attack. Juan describing those moments from his hospital bed. We crossed one the first bridge in Nirping. We're going to film other refugees leaving. Mm -hmm. And we got onto a car. Somebody offered to take us to the other bridge. And we crossed a checkpoint and they start shooting at us. Um, so the driver turned around and they kept shooting. It's two of us. My friend is Brent Renault and he's been shot. Time issuing a statement saying we're devastated by the loss. Our hearts are with all of Brent's loved ones. It's essential that journalists are able to safely cover this ongoing invasion and humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. Just days ago in Irpin, cameras caught the disturbing moment when a Russian mortar struck the road where civilians could be seen trying to flee. This photo shows several members of the same family killed in the strike. Among them was Tatyana Perebinis and her two children. She worked for a Silicon Valley company. Her husband, Sergei, showed us the cases they were using trying to flee the town. There's blood. He says he still can't believe what's happened. What is your message? to America, to Americans, about what's happened here. He tells me he wants a no-fly zone, but he's going to stay and fight, saying, I will not run away again, I have nothing left to lose. Across the country, the Russian bombardment is increasingly indiscriminate and hitting residential buildings and civilian infrastructure. Ukrainian President Zelensky traveling to a military hospital, meeting with soldiers injured in the fighting. With Russian strikes now close to the Polish border, the U.S. reaffirming its commitment to the alliance. We take our Article 5 commitment very seriously. An armed attack against one is considered an armed attack against all.
Today, a fourth round of peace talks is taking place via video link following optimistic comments by both sides over the weekend. Ukraine and Russia's negotiators saying progress has been made and they're moving closer to a potential compromise. But this morning, even as those talks are going on, what we're hearing is the sound of heavy bombardment and fighting to the east of the city as the Russians try to advance towards the capital. Ian Panel, ABC News, in Kyiv, Ukraine. And since this newscast began, we have learned that Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky will address a joint session of Congress here in the U.S. virtually coming up on Wednesday. And as the war runs into its third week, many are wondering how this will all end. Our Lee Waldman spoke with a UTSA professor who says it will not be soon. The Russian invasion slowly taking over Ukraine. The United Nations reporting at least 549 civilian lives have been lost. 41 of those children. They, they, they changed the, their approach to being much more willing to take risk on civilian lives and being much more brutal for lack of a better word, in their approach. UTSA Associate Professor of Political Science Matthias Hofferberth has been following the war closely. We have to live with this war for quite some time. When analyzing motivation behind the invasion, Hofferberth speculates there are several geopolitical and territorial gains, but globally. There would still be this sort of intrinsic security motivation to not have a country bordering Russia which becomes a member of NATO. When looking at those bordering countries like Poland, Estonia, and Latvia, there is fear that when Russia takes Ukraine, they'll keep marching on. Hofferberth says each country's NATO status plays a role. I, I think it's a bit of an unlikely scenario because uh, the, the big difference is Ukraine was an associated member and not a full member. People from Ukraine like Olena Kristuk and Olenka Bravo say they believe Putin's war will extend beyond Ukraine if NATO doesn't step in. We don't need to sacrifice Ukrainians towards peaceful resolution because even if the world will sacrifice Ukraine, it's not going to be the peaceful resolution. Putin will go farther. Both are heartbroken watching the place they love under fire, knowing over two million Ukrainians have left without guarantee they'll have a country let alone a home to go back to. And they need help so they can stay in their country and live on their land and have their freedom and democracy and right, the right to self-determination. That was our Lee Waldman reporting. Now that associate professor from UTSA she talked to said that China needs to step up rather than stay on the sidelines, he says, because of the close Chinese-Russian relationship. And the UTSA professor also says international negotiations will be in key in de-escalation. De you can read more about this on our website at ksat.com. 938, about 56 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And guess who's back? Back again. Brady's back. Tell a friend. Okay, we all know he's coming back. David Sears is standing by to talk about that big news and some big recognition for our coach Pop. You better have a song for Pop, too. <laughs> <laughs> Big sports weekend. Tom Brady can't go away, and the Cowboys <laughs> make some moves. The Spurs win, and March Madness begins. David's back. Back again. Back again. Yep. Not a lot of games going on this weekend. A lot of stuff happening in the world yeah. of sports. Huh? How about Tom Brady? Just can't get rid of this guy. He's decided <laughs> that uh, after a 40-day retirement, he's coming back for his 23rd season. Apparently, I'm, I'm not surprised if Tampa Bay like called him and begged him to come back because they were having a hard time finding a decent quarterback to replace him. Like, Tom, you had a great year last year. Why don't you come on back and play another year because we got nobody. And Tom said, sure, why not? He said he's got some unfinished business. Of course, he did this all through social media. He said his place is on the field, not in the stands. And he said the time will come, but not now. So Tom Brady is coming back. And if you recall, Rob Gronkowski, his favorite teammate, he – said back in February that he didn't think Tom Brady was going to retire. He said he'd be back, and so he called it back in February. Ah. Who knew Gronk was such a fortune teller? <laughs> so the question is, would he come back? Ah. That is yeah. the question. I heard you mention that earlier. All right, let's get to the Cowboys. A lot of news over the weekend for Dallas. Amari Cooper headed to Cleveland now mm -hmm. to trade for a couple of draft picks. It was more about getting rid of money than it was getting a lot of players for Amari Cooper. Because so what Brands fans, lot. they're not booing. They're saying coo. Coo, yeah, so that's what that is. But, but see, he got like rid of a $20 million hit on the salary cap that he was going to get paid if he stayed like through March something. So they traded him, got a couple of draft picks for him. So that means C.D. Lamb, 
the kid out of Oklahoma is now going to be the number one receiver for the Cowboys. And, oh, by the way, Michael Gallup just got a really big deal of $62 million. He hurt his knee last year at the end of the season. Remember that? Yeah. Had a uh, torn, I think he's a uh, torn ligament in his knee. So he's recovering from that. But he's, uh, he's got a lot of money to help him recover at $62 million. Well, I'm sure it helped getting the Gallup deal done with Coop out of the way. With Coop out of the way, yeah. yeah. And also, uh, Leal Collins, the right tackle, mm -hmm. he's been hurt a lot recently. They've said, you can go ahead and find somebody that will do a trade, give us somebody else, and, and you can leave. Mm -hmm. So they obviously have a lot of confidence in Terrence Steele, the kid from San Antonio, Cimolo yeah. Steele. He went to Tech, and then he went on to the Cowboys as a free agent, and he played a lot for Leal Collins. So apparently yeah. they're pretty satisfied he's, with the way he's been playing. He's so, starter material. So there you go. So there's a uh, starting offensive lineman from San Antonio. Yes, sir. Gotta love that. Nice. Yes. All right, Steph, we're giving you all the credit. So you went to the game <laughs> on Friday night. The Spurs are down, and apparently somebody noticed you and Rooney were up in the stands <laughs> and cheering hard, and they went, well, I guess we better win. <laughs> how, how this, nice. is, this was how their nice reaction when they yeah, saw that, Steph. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was it. So Aww. Pop finally reached the pinnacle. He is now the all-time winningest coach in NBA history. And we were talking a little bit about, not, not that it's about me. Of course, I was here before Pop got here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think, I figured it out one day, the Spurs play 42 or 41 regular season home games. Mm -hmm. And so I've probably been to about 85 to 90 percent and sat and watched about 85 to 90 percent of those home games yes. and then went in the locker room and interviewed him. So I've seen a lot of those 1,336 You need to call Coach Pop. So, Tell him. I didn't. You call. need to call him and tell him, like, yeah. hey, uh, you, sure, you owe me some of this credit. I'm, I'm sure he's <laughs> sitting there waiting for my phone call. So, yeah. <laughs> no, but, but I mean, you know, that's, that's, a lot of, yeah. that's a lot of games to watch. That's a lot of interviews to do with Pop and, and those guys over the years. And that's, that's incredible. Well, it, and it's a big deal. But what was also really cool is to watch this young team come together yep. and beat a really good Utah yeah. Jazz, Jazz team the other night. To, to get that win for mm -hmm. him. Yep. And the thing about it is he did it with one team. And he did it in 26 seasons. Don Nelson, the guy's record that he broke, mm -hmm. I think it took him 31 to get there. And he did it with multiple teams. But Pop's just been head coach of one team in the NBA. So, that's, so cool. When you one think one about of, all the guys that have come through, and he, you know, he stayed with the big three for so long. Yeah. So that's, that's a pretty incredible feat. That was one of our favorite parts. He, Pop had just about escaped the court, and David Robinson <laughs> in, in, intercepted yeah. him right underneath the yeah. hoop. Underneath the hoop. So, that's, oh, yeah. uh, so congratulations to him. Now let's see if he can get a few more. He needs a few more if he's going to make the playoffs this year. So he yeah. can keep adding to that record because they're still two out of that 10th spot. Mm -hmm. And they've got Portland between them. And then, of course, New Orleans has that 10th spot. And they're running out of games, running out of time. So uh, we are going to enjoy some fantastic March Madness here in San Antonio. Remember, March Madness starts this weekend. And the brackets were laid out. By the way, here, I'm, uh -oh. I'm going over here, Don. So here's you, here, I'm going to give you your first Thank bracket. you. So there Thank you, you oh. very much. To you. Oh, yeah. All right. Neighbors. <laughs> Um, okay. So I'll probably guess all these right. So ne this weekend is the first weekend, mm -hmm. 64, and then next weekend will be the Sweet 16 and Grade 8 and South Region so. Final is here in San Antonio next weekend. And I was looking for some tickets and stuff. There's some tickets going for like $2,000. Yikes. A lot of them are going really fast at the AT&T Center, so this is going to be a great. Texas, Texas Tech, TCU, Baylor, Houston, and are some of the big Texas mm -hmm. schools that are actually in the tournament this year. A&M. Didn't quite and make it. and the game. national title game yeah. in New Orleans, national April 4th, so, which will be yeah. here quick. Like yeah, well. so, so we're going to have some great, great basketball. Arizona is the number one seed in the South region, mm -hmm. so they could be coming to San Antonio and some other teams. Houston, TCU could be coming to San Antonio. So it's going to be it's going to be a great tournament. It's going to be a lot of fun because it's actually the tournament the way it should be pre pandemic type. tournament. Got awesome. So, All right. Looking forward to it. So looking forward to that. So David, you thank you. Thank you, David. All right, what's up next? I think we're going to talk to Sarah. I'm a little Hi. sad, she got a bracket. Though. Okay, but A&M, I mean, there's a lot of controversy there. Isn't Not there, Dave? controversy, really. I <laughs> feel it. I feel it. All right? All I got to say is gig em. That's it. That's all, right. all I'll say. Got it done. Okay. All right. I showed you, I promised you that I'd show you a more detailed version of the pollen count. Here it is. There are three allergens out there right now, molds, ash, and oak. Thankfully, they are all low. And the aquifer. The aquifer is down three-tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. Just a reminder that we are under stage one water restrictions. If you're a SAWS customer, you can only water with an irrigation or a sprinkler system once a week 
link according to your address uh, and all that information is on ksat.com but we need we need 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 rain march is usually a good month for us rain wise and we just haven't seen anything and there doesn't really look like there's going to be much of a significant chance for rain in the future and drought is moving in from the west uh, we've got moderate drought uh, all across bear county but even some severe drought in southern bear county and western bear county with ex Stream drought across the Winter Garden region and out toward Del Rio. It's been 139 days since Del Rio has seen a quarter of an inch of rainfall or more. And in the rain forecast for San Antonio, really only a small chance in eastern San Antonio and in uh, areas out toward Seguin to see an isolated thunder shower tonight. Otherwise, it's going to be a dry week ahead. Outside right now, you can see that we've got a bit of a haze on the horizon there from high higher humidity, mostly cloudy skies, 54 degrees. And it's interesting because there's cloud cover for the northern half of Bear County, but total sunshine for the southern half of Bear County. It's cloudy up in the hill country in Kerrville and Bandera at Bernie Sage Airfield. It's uh, starting to get fairly cloudy near New Braunfels as well. Temperatures are in the 50s. It's 54 in San Antonio, 57 at JBSA Randolph. In a wider view here, you can see the swath of cloud cover enveloping uh, the hill country, but Del Rio seeing some some sunshine too. Today, those clouds are going to struggle to clear, especially up in the hill country. We'll have mostly cloudy conditions until about lunch and then total sunshine this afternoon. Dew points are high. Uh, humidity is uh, at the top of the dry scale here. It's, it still feels pretty pleasant outside, but dew points have gone up significantly in the last 24 hours. We've had a steady south wind, and so dew points have gone up some 20 to 35 degrees just within the last 24 hours. And again, you may not feel the intense humidity out there, but it's going to prevent temperatures from cooling down all that much uh, tonight. Now, look at the Forecast for the day today will be at 80 degrees for the high temperature, so it is going to be warm with again clearing skies this afternoon. Breezy south southwest winds at 5 to 15, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. And we do have a chance for some isolated showers east of San Antonio tonight, especially towards Seguin uh, and up into the eastern part of uh, Texas. But generally, it should uh, be fairly quiet around San Antonio, breezy and dry with temperatures climbing to into the 70s and 80s for the remainder of the week. Very spring-like and breezy in our forecast. Thank you, Sarah. 951, about 56 degrees. And after the break, there's a new addition at the San Antonio Zoo. When we come back, we're going to introduce you to this little guy. His name's not Joey. No. No. <laughs> 80 degrees today. We are going to see a few storms east of San Antonio, but nothing for the Alamo City. We're going to be looking at a temperatures in the 70s and 80s with plenty of sunshine. Very spring like this forecast this week and it's going to be breezy pretty much every day too. All right. One of the hot spots in town during especially nice weather yes. and spring break is the San Antonio Zoo. Yeah, that's right. And they have a new, well, I would say not a visitor, but a new person there. Not person, I'm sorry. <laughs> a a Joey. <laughs> a new Joey. An addition. <laughs> an addition. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Um, so this is Poseidon. And uh, yeah, so he is about six months old. Mm -hmm. and an adorable Joey mm -hmm. born to Pearl and Rocky, who mm -hmm. apparently met on Match.com. Who knew? Uh, yeah. Just kidding. Uh, though the San Antonio <laughs> Zoo says it's hard to say his exact age due to his extremely small size size at birth, but we do know that he's a Joey and his name is Poseidon. Yeah, so guests can visit Poseidon in Kangaroo Crossing if you go to the zoo along with his mother and all of the other kangaroos out there. Now they said he, they're about the size of a jelly bean when yeah. they're born, so they're very easy to miss while crawling into the pouch. But uh, now he's out and about and, and, and doing his thing and hanging out there with mom and seems yeah. to be enjoying himself. New addition, yeah. It also has uh, some younger kangaroos there as well. And they're all uh, named after the ocean theme. There you go. Have a great day.